Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Skeena, Bulkley Valley. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I begin this debate with a slight bias because the author, of course, is, is a friend from Red Deer, Lacombe, and my wife is from Red Deer, and so in, initially I start off wanting to support the bill because all good things come from Red Deer, generally speaking. This, this might, unfortunately, be the exception to that rule, Madam Speaker, and, and I'm unable to support the bill for a couple of important reasons that I think for my conservative friends who worry about foreign interference, I hope that they can understand how foreign interference in its full measure actually impacts our democracy. How foreign interference fully involves itself in the hearts and minds of Canadians over such important issues like, well, big pharma is certainly involved, large oil, multinational oil companies, the, the banking sector, and on and on. So now let's, let's start with what this bill attempts to do, which is to minimize or eliminate the effects of foreign money into Canadian elections. A laudable goal, and a goal that is in part accomplished by the government's much delayed uh, and much amended Election Bill C-76. Yet the, the cons there's a conspiracy under this bill that is, the bill is trying to address. The conspiracy is the following that there are foreign-funded radicals, as the former uh, Prime Minister of Canada, Stephen Harper, said, that these foreign-funded uh, foundations, excuse me, these foreign foundations, particularly in the United States, who all have environmental agendas, agendas being a, a neutral word, I suppose, to try to fight climate change. The conspiracy rolls out that these foreign foundations then seek to block oil pipelines to China in order to keep oil at a cheaper rate to American consumers. So, so follow that again. Foundations that are established to fight climate change, to bring about environmental initiatives, are fighting for lower oil for American consumers. Two fundamental flaws in this conspiratorial logic, if you want to call it logic. One is, Americans are net exporters of oil. Second, why would somebody fighting climate change seek to have lower oil? The same groups that advocate for price on carbon, the same groups that advocate for less use of oil in our society, under this conspiracy theory, are advocating for cheaper and more oil to be coming only to the United States and not to China. Now, the conspiracy follows, falls apart almost immediately because those advocating, Ms. Krauss and others, are also funded not by uh, foreign foundations, but by oil companies, and then claim to be unbiased and neutral and just good Canadians hard on uh, sleeve just talking about what's important to them and their families, taking money from oil companies all along the way. So let's, let's look at what the bill attempts to do, and if there's a flaw in the writing of the bill, I would argue, in that it only addresses political advertising. It's an important part of what happens in campaigns, but certainly we as elected people know that how a campaign manifests itself is in part through advertising on social media or newspapers and radio, but a large part of what happens in campaigning is door-to-door, -door, community events, education material. All of that is excluded from this bill, curiously, something that I've not fully understood as to why it would be absent. The, the, the further, and this is the most dramatic flaw, Mrs. Speaker, Madam Speaker, is that the bill only seeks to go after foreign foundations, but it exempts all companies that have any, quote, business, carry on a business in Canada. Now, you think that must mean a Canadian business, wholly owned and operated within Canada, maybe with subsidiaries in other countries, but that's not actually what the definition of business is under the Act. A business is anybody who has carry on a business in Canada, and that can be a single worker in a single office of a multinational pharmaceutical company, oil company, bank, whatever, that qualifies under this bill to be exempted. And that business that is carrying on business in Canada is able to donate to advertising campaigns and election camp or not excuse me, not election campaigns, but education campaigns. And you say, well, why are they going so much after the charities? And if we recall back to the previous government, and I must take umbrage with what my, the, the last colleague from the Conservatives said, where he criticized, I believe he was criticizing environmental groups for not being critical enough of foreign governments like Saudi Arabia and Iran and whatnot. This coming from the same government that sold Saudi Arabia tanks, light armored vehicles that were weaponized and used to suppress democratic rights in Yemen. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit much for conservatives to say environmental groups are not doing enough to criticize Saudi Arabia, coming from the same conservatives that sold them tanks. Like, criticism is sure, it's warranted and necessary, but enabling the Saudis to kill people seems to me a higher order of degree of severity, and, and certainly shows itself to be hypocrisy coming from the 
the now opposition, who were then government. Here's, here's a fundamental problem that I have, and we've seen this on the ground in northern BC that I represent. We've had many debates over pipelines. I think at one point we had 23 LNG pipelines uh, proposed across my region. We had one significant diluted bitumen pipeline proposed to go from Alberta all the way through two coastlines, 1,100 streams and rivers, into Kitimat, down the Douglas Channel allegedly, and then off to China, supposedly. So we've had our fair share of debate. We've had our share of environmental conversations, the jobs versus economy, jobs and economy debate. We've seen it on the ground, Madam Speaker. And where I, I the, the, the example I will use is the one closest to us, which was this entire debate around Enbridge Northern Gateway. So this is a debate that occurred in my region of the world for about a dozen years, at least. And it started to heat up and had a focal point uh, in the long campaign over a plebiscite, a vote that was being conducted in the, the district of Kitimat, the city of Kitimat itself, where the terminus was meant to be located. And this was the first time in Canadian history that I'm aware of where a community held a referendum, if you will, a vote on a major industrial project. Do we want this oil pipeline and then the terminus and the tankers that are associated to go ahead, yes or no? And for those that haven't been to Kitimat, British Columbia, this was a town, the district side, was built entirely for industrial purposes. It was, it was initiated some 60 years ago as a planned community by Alcan, now Rio Tinto. And it was a planned community to support a smelter. The, the province of British Columbia essentially gave them a river to dam and then use as very, very cheap power to smelt aluminum and create an entire industrial complex. So if there's any town in British Columbia, if not Canada, that is pro-industry, you'd say it's Kitimat. They've had many large industrial type projects and they're quite proud of them. So this was a vote being held. And on one side, you had a small group called the Douglas Channel Watch. Local vo volunteers, these would be the, in the conspiracy world of some of my colleagues, the, the foreign funded folks. Well, they had, a, I think their grand total that they spent on the referendum was 850, correct me? $875. On the other side, you had Enbridge Northern Gateway. Now, which was a subsidiary of Enbridge, what was the same company in itself, who had raised, follow the numbers, $100 million to support and lobby for their pipeline from 10 different upstream and downstream oil companies, many of them Chinese. $100 million to promote one pipeline, not to build it, no construction costs, no engineering, no science, no anthropological work, just for promotion. And leading up to this referendum, they were flying in employees from all over the place. They took out advertisements, every single newspaper along our highway, all the way through to Alberta, talking about how important this vote was, even though the vote was only taking place in one town. Full page ads, color ads, radio advertisements, on and on it went. And so if anyone's talking about an unfair conversation about a Canadian democratic choice, this was it. Millions of dollars being spent on one side from foreign sources, which would remain legal under this bill that the Conservatives have proposed. And on the other side, a locally funded charity who were having bake sales in order to have flyers so they could go door to door and talk to people about the vote that was coming. And despite all of that, Madam Speaker, the referendum passed against this pipeline and the terminus and the tankers because the people in Kitimat said, where we live, a diluted bitumen pipeline and the tankers, the super tankers associated to it, sailing down the Douglas Channel, performing three 90 degree turns through some of the worst and most dangerous water in North America, out to China, is not a good proposal for us. In the risk versus benefit, it is not worth it. And so they took their vote despite the lopsided campaign that had been initiated. So if the Conservatives actually wanted to get at the heart of this, and we think it's laudable to try to distance ourselves, remove ourselves, inoculate ourselves from foreign influence when we're having a democratic election, when we're having a referendum or a general election of any kind, we agree. But you have to be equal to both sides. You can't simply go after environmental groups because Conservatives just don't like them. Meanwhile, turning a blind eye to the corporate sector that have vastly uh, larger sums of money available 
and have deep interest that goes beyond a single election, a single referendum, into many decades. We would encourage my Conservative colleagues to come to the fulsome debate and say, let's level the playing field in our debates. Let's shut off all foreign influence, absolutely, but let's do it on behalf of all Canadians, not just on behalf of those we happen to like. Last thing, the Conservatives I know in Alberta, and Alberta in general, are not victims. They're hard, good-working people. This bill points them as somehow being victims to some foreign influence. Thank you very much.